This is a film you have to see on a big screen. Yeah. I think that's why we're so excited that it's going to theaters because you get to feel it with the audience and you want to hide and you can't hide. Guys, give it up for Team Immaculate. Woo! <laughs> um, so it's just a little thing we do here. Just a little thing we do. I think that was so nice. <laughs> um, guys, this movie is immaculate. It's called Immaculate and it's actually immaculate. I mean, you had me at Evil Nuns and then it, it only gets better. It only gets better from there. You guys premiere tonight, right? It's out by. It's gonna play. This is gonna play like gangbusters. People are people are not prepared. I was not prepared for this movie. Me too. You guys are not prepared for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy, as the lead, can you set it up for us? Tell tell us tell us the premise of this oh one. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you have Cecilia, who is from the states, but she goes to Italy to a unknown convent where she meets Benedetta's character and unforeseen circumstances happen mm -hmm. and she winds up becoming pregnant she doesn't know how she doesn't know why and she finds herself trapped in almost a torture chamber michael tell us what drew you into this one i mean did you did you go to catholic school did you uh did you have some nuns there are you working something out here with this one <laughs> definitely definitely working something out no i grew up catholic and was the leader of our youth group and all of that stuff and and uh, I am curious to know what my friends back home are going to think of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't send it. You didn't send it to anyone for notes. Like I want them to you want buy them a to ticket expect. on opening night. Like <laughs> yeah, Bernadetta. Mm -hmm. Can you set up who you play and and how your character folds into the story? Um, yes, sure. I'm Gwen. I'm trying to become a nun, but I don't really believe in it. And I'm already in the convent when. Uh, Cecilia arrives and as Sydney said the strange circumstances start to, starts from the very beginning of the story and I somehow I, I realize that she's in danger and there's something wrong in this place and that I don't like the people um, and and trying to to save her somehow you're, Tell you. you're warning both her and the audience really Sorry? you're warning both her and the audience yes that something is not I'm warning right. I'm the warning person <laughs> <laughs> you're you're um, raising the red flag. It's not basically. a happy ending story, but I'm trying to. Yeah. I try to. Yeah. <laughs> and Simona, tell us who, who you play as well. I'm playing a nun, a rebel nun, and also my character knows that um, already is happening into the convent, mm -hmm. and so she's trying to escape. And. <laughs> yeah, something is happening. And you'll see what <laughs> happens from there. Alvaro, can you set up your, your character and tell us uh, yeah, what sure. intrigued you um, about him? I'm performing... Like yeah, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Father Tedeschi in the movie, who is a priest, let's say, in charge of the monastery where Sister Cecilia comes. He's a priest, but he was graduated also in biology, and um, he's just trying to use his knowledge to make things good in the monastery. Okay, okay. And we'll see where he goes with that. Why are you laughing? We'll see what happens. I don't understand. <laughs> yes, that, yes, yes. That's about like a, a, a quarter of what happens with this character. Yeah. Sydney, you, you, you're so good on SNL. Uh, and, Thank you. And, and you set this one up a little bit on SNL. You said I play a nun, and which is perfect casting. And the joke is obviously that this is feels like such a departure from anything you've done. Was that sort of part of the intent? Was that part of the draw to do something that you know people would think was unexpected? I always like to find things that are unexpected character story mm -hmm. that's the fun thing about acting is being someone that you're not and so i don't want to play the same character over and over again mm -hmm. and i've been in love with a story and i've been chasing this story for a really long time and mm -hmm. i was really happy that i was able to do it by the same token this film goes to such dark unexpected places it's one of the craziest movies i've seen in a long time it could also i think it might feel like a safe choice, but it, it might be the boldest thing you've actually ever done. Wow, do, thank do you, th you. Do you think? I like to make bold choices, so I hope so. Yeah. Let's talk about just sort of the idea of finding horror in religion, because it's 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 well mined, obviously, in Hollywood. It has a g grand tradition uh, from The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby. To uh, it feels like there's an Exorcism movie that comes out every year. This is not that. This is like this. I actually I felt like this was like Rose channeling Rosemary's Baby in a lot of ways. It feels that same way. Why is there such good horror to be mined in yeah, religion? I mean, absolutely. I, well, I think the difference between our film and, and a lot of the more recent uh, 
religious horror films is that ours is not supernatural. In our case, the evil is real. The evil is man. The events in this story could happen. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's when I look back on the, the horror of the early 1970s, I think that's the, that's the difference between that and today is that they're much more visceral. There's always going to be uh, uh, hard to be mined from spirituality, but yeah. here we tried to do it in a different way. Did you have a, like a consultant on set for, for the religious or spiritual aspects at all? Mm, just repressed memories. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, for the cast, I mean, this, this film takes such wild turns. Uh, what was your experience like watching this for the first time? I was traumatized. <laughs> I couldn't realize when I was shooting that the thing was so real and so... That's the thing, it's not um, unnatural. I mean, everything is absolutely um, embodied by human beings. So I was moved by her performance, which is incredible. I think it was the right effect he wanted to <laughs> provoke. <laughs> it's a beautiful film, actually. How was your experience watching this? Well, I wanted to watch it in uh, into a cinema. Uh, so I'm going to watch it tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, for oh, the first luck. time. Yeah. Big screen. Big screen. Yeah, me too. I have. I didn't have a chance to to watch it yet, mm -hmm. so it's gonna be first time for me tonight. Mm -hmm. This is film you have to see on a big screen. Yeah. I think that's why we're so excited that it's going to theaters because you get to feel it with the audience and just it. You want to hide and you can't hide. Okay, so you're you're actually giving notes. Yeah, the whole, you're, you're, the whole process. You were, you were helping form this thing. Yeah. Wow. Well, can you talk about that aspect and what what Cindy brought as a, as a producer? I mean, she's a great producer. Sid and I have been working together since she was 19, mm -hmm. and on a on a Netflix show called Everything Sucks, mm -hmm. uh, R.I.P. Even back then, I I saw her. You know, she's she's a cinephile. She would sit with the ACs and learn about lenses. And you know, when we made Voyeurs a few years ago, you know, it's just. It's so nice to have a collaborator who helps you inspire the crew to do their best work. And, uh, and that's what we wanted to do here was to like make something that really, where the craft of the filmmaking felt, like you said, like immaculate, where it's really beautiful and you see the language of the cinema sort of devolve as we see her character sort of descend into madness. How would you guys describe like what the, the vibe was on, on set of this film? Because it is such a dark, intense film, but are, are, are you like, Keeping things, are you trying to keep things light? Like, oh, is yeah, it I was running around. We were yeah, love. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. How the about opposite of the story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We were very mm. delighted and having fun. Michael, can you talk a little bit more about sort of your own? Like, we've we've touched on this a little bit, but I would love to hear sort of like your cinematic inspirations for for the look and feel of, of, of this film. It all harkens back to the American New Wave of the of the early seventies. You know, those films like you know, Rosemary's Baby, for instance, it's so intimate, but at the same time, it's so cinematic, you know? And you look at a film like The Exorcist, where back then, people were unafraid to make really bold choices and, and show imagery that almost feels like like inappropriate, you know? But it's so memorable, and The Exorcist is a classy movie in spite of that. And so I think that balance of the lurid with just a general, like, you know, uh, I don't know, higher end filmmaking aesthetic is something we were going for. Sydney, beyond this one, you're just having a hell of a year. Uh, I, I mentioned how good you are on SNL. Of course, Madam Web came out about which you seem to, I, I, I'm really appreciating like what a great sense of humor you guys seem to have about that film. Like Dakota has joked about it. It was joked about in the Oscars. But like what were the, you know, never easy when a film doesn't, you know, reach expectations but like what what have been sort of the positives that you've taken out of this experience well i built such amazing relationships and friendships with like celeste and isabella and i went home and i screened the movie for my family and my little cousins dressed up as little spider girls and like that's that's why i did it and that's what is meaningful and beautiful about the entire process yeah uh well for all of you guys uh what do you what are you sort of most looking forward to exploring uh at south by southwest and in, in austin uh are you guys gonna see any anything <laughs> anything else yeah. are you guys gonna have some barbecue <laughs> Oh, it's my first time in Texas, so that's enough, I think, because I'm very, um, I'm very happy, and the festival is incredible. I I heard about it so for so long, so I'm very honored to be here with this film with all my friends. So, but me the same. I can't wait to live this whole entire experience. So mm -hmm. I'm waiting. Just. 
to leave the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. I came yesterday. I went to Congress Avenue. Mm -hmm. Such nice vibes. Uh, we went to Whitehorse to listen to some live music. So, and I think I'm going to a barbecue today. So it's going to be the full nice. package. Nice. How about you? I'm hoping to get on some barbecue food. <laughs> Nice, nice. Well, guys, again, big congrats on this film. I loved it. I can't wait for everybody to see it. Once again, give it up for Team Immaculate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys.